Now, some hawkers are saying they will have to close shop if they cannot secure a supply of fresh chickens when a Malaysia export ban on chickens takes effect. Unpacking this issue further, we have Professor Paul Ting, who is an expert on Singapore's food security. And he's from the Centre for Non-Traditional Security Studies at the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies. Well, Professor, how long do you think this export ban on live chickens could last? And what are the alternatives for now? Well, you know, it's really not possible at the moment to predict how long this ban will last because there are external and internal factors at play. And also, the ban hasn't started yet. But if we look at external factors, though, they're mainly beyond the control of Malaysia. You know, supply, cost of feed, corn and soybean and so on, partly due to the Ukraine crisis. And, and the price of feed is not expected to go down with the high demand and high cost of shipping and so on. And then internally, you know, if you look at how fast the chicken industry can respond to factors, like profitability is going to remain determinant, cost of feed, uh, price stabilization, and so on. But the government in Malaysia has announced it will take measures like creating a buffer stock, allowing imports from overseas slaughterhouses, and so on. So that in the short term, the sooner external internal factors need to increase supply in Malaysia, the sooner Malaysia can leave the export ban. What happens in the next few weeks will be quite critical, especially after June 1st, to give us an indication of whether some of these measures will be working at all. You know, basically, you know, importing more buffer stock and so on. Only then can we tell how long the ban will last, basically. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, and Prof, you know, uh, could Singapore be hit by more food items uh, being affected by export bans as the region, you know, dishes out more food protectionist measures? I mean, we saw that India is banning exports of wheat and sugar. Indonesia only very recently lifted uh, that palm oil export ban. So could we see more food items being threatened? Well, my, my assessment is that it's possible, but I think highly unlikely. Yeah, I think the reason why countries, you know, practice protectionism is out of fear that there's not enough supply for their domestic consumption. Okay, and, and with the exception of wheat, you know, with sugar, India is a big user of that. I really don't see a high likelihood of there being further protectionism. Of course, the unknown really is rice, as you mentioned earlier, I think. You know, my really fear is that some catastrophe happens in the next few months that will reduce the production of rice. That will then send a chain reaction. But that's a big unknown at the moment. So the short answer to your question is that possible, but I really don't see a strong likelihood there being that much of protectionism occurring in the short term anyway. Well, Prof, you know, these situations, uh, they're not new to Singapore because we've we faced shocks to our food supply before. Uh, can you remind us, remind us of some of these instances and, and how did we get around it? And uh, do you think we're better prepared now to deal with such supply shocks? Well, well there's been many, many instances. I think pre-COVID, you know, there were some temporary export bans of fish and vegetables from Malaysia. Then during COVID, there were shortages of vegetables coming in because of basically, you know, movement control measures in exporting countries. Then in some of the drought years, there were shortages of soybean and corn, which then led to increases in animal feed prices and also increases in meat prices subsequently. And of course, the Ukraine crisis is on fresh in everybody's mind. And we're seeing delays because of supply chain, you know, disruptions and so on. If you go back further, the food crisis of 07, 08, you know, I think it's, it's still pretty fresh in the minds of many people. And during 07, 08 was when two countries threatened to reduce rice exports, causing a big panic in the marketplace. Now, what have we learned? What, what lessons? I think, you know, for Singapore, I think the biggest lesson that we have learned is that we are so vulnerable to short-term supply disruptions. And that's why we need preparedness plans in place. And that's why we need to ensure that we have many, many sources to import, import the same food items. Okay? As we all know, right now, Singapore imports to a very diversified number of supply chains from more than 180 countries. And these are spread geographically across hemispheres and growing seasons. 
And also, you know, the government agencies are continually identifying new sources to import from. Like during the COVID you know, pandemic, I think we saw Singapore expand import countries like shrimp from Saudi Arabia, eggs from Poland, and so on. Yeah. But one lesson that perhaps we need to learn much better is that we can't afford to depend too much on a single country. I think That's Malaysia right, is you know, 34% yeah. of our chicken. Definitely yeah, so can't, yeah. can't afford to depend on one country. We have to diversify our sources. Yeah. Thank you so much for speaking us speaking with us today. Yeah, That's yeah. Professor Paul Ting there from the S. Rajaratnam School of International Studies. And that is your business update.